All right, you're listening to Watchman's Update. I'm going to go ahead and tell you straight up front, you're going to need an aluminum foil hat for this episode. <laughs> I just got finished recording, and uh, I realized that I left something out. So I'm going to go ahead and give you all these right up front. That way you get, so get your pen and paper out, write these down. You'll, get, you'll hear them again in the episode. But the reason I'm going to give them to you right up front, that way you can come back play the episode again from the beginning and and get these and you can write them down. Wrap seed oil, wrap seed oil, canola oil, high fructose corn syrup, TBHQ, BHA, and BHT. And the one I left out, I forgot in the episode when I was doing it, was mono and diglycerides. Now, those are ingredients in food, and they're called generally recognized as safe ingredients. Now, so put your aluminum foil hat on or grab your Bible, whichever one you think is appropriate for this episode. I struggled through this episode. I'll just go ahead and tell you the truth. I struggled through it, and I've recorded it and recorded it so many times, and I think I finally brought it home, and I really hope you enjoy it. So, Stick around, and plus, don't forget the prayer at the end. And God bless y'all, and thank y'all for listening. I'm going to cue the intro here. And so, we set an ambitious goal to cut our greenhouse gas emissions in half by 2030 and to reach net zero emissions by 2050. The investment we are announcing today will help us to achieve these goals, and it will do so much more. Because think also about the impact on not only the local economy, not only on an investment in the entrepreneurs and innovators from and in the community, think about the impact on something like public health. When we invest in clean energy and electric vehicles and reduce population, more of our children can breathe clean air and drink clean water. The generations that come before us, they went to church on a regular basis. They knew their Bibles. They knew the Holy Spirit. And that's all but lost now. I want to sit down together, show you some things that's going on in the news and how it applies to scripture. So dust your Bibles off. Come on. All right. You're listening to Watchman's Update and you heard Kamal Harris there. That's a clip. She's Everybody kind of went crazy on social media when she come out with that. And everybody, you know, it just, in other words, just not her. I'm not just pointing the finger at her. It's a whole group. And the best way to say it is, is globalist. If you don't know what the globalists are, you're going to have to look it up. Look, I, I could explain, I was, I've, I've recorded this a few times and I sit down and I explain the World Economic Forum and, and I need to do a whole podcast on nothing but the World Economic Forum so people can understand that, but they're not God's people, okay? Uh, so, but I'm just going to kind of skip past all that because I've danced around this. If you'll notice, she, she mentioned two things there. Reducing the population and plus the climate change and all that, but reducing the population. And the other thing that's very important that she mentioned was 2030. Now, you could go and research all that, whatever, but that the worldly side of 2030 is not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about their global plan to do anything. I don't care what they're planning on doing because it. I know who wins. I've read my Bible. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the 2030 I'm talking about is Jesus is believed to be around 30 years old when he died on the cross. 
And 2,000 years after he ascended into heaven, he's supposed to come back according to all the prophecy in the Bible. Now, I could get into all that, but you know, it says a day is unto a, a, a thousand years unto a day is a day is unto a thousand years to the Lord. And that's in there two or three times. I believe it's in Job and Psalms and Second Thessalonians. I didn't really prepare for that part. <laughs> I didn't. I got. I could look that up, but you you can look. You just type in a thousand years and in, in the Bible and it in your search engine on your Bible and you'll find you'll find it. But what I want to talk about is we're living in the last days. I've said that over and over and over in this in this show, and I I've, I've wrote notes and notes and notes to tell y'all about the World Economic Forum and their globalist agenda and all this stuff, but it doesn't do me any good. I can rant, rave. You you'll get tired of hearing that in just a minute. You know what I mean? And this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna read for you something that's very important, and uh, you know the. Well, first of all, Ten Commandments, you know, thou shalt not bear false witness. But this right here, love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, love does not boast, love is not proud, love does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. And the King James says, love rejoices not in iniquity but rejoices in the truth. I read that to you because I got to tell you the truth and you need to hear it. And I got no other way. I can't get around it. I've, I've sweetened it up best I could and tried over and over and it don't work. So I'm just going to come on out with it. Believe it or not. Okay. First thing I want to say right here is we know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. So it's very important to note, don't put nothing past. My my wife tells me all the time, uh, so-and-so ain't ain't saved, so I don't know why you expect so much out of them. And that's it. They're not saved. Don't expect them to behave like somebody who's saved. This whole world's under the control of the evil one. That's that's uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. That is 19, yeah. So here's where I'm going with this. We're talking about popular, reducing the population, population control. Now, I can tell you to go look at the Georgia Guidestones. It says they want, you know, on a, it's in, somebody blew them up, but it said the, the whole deal kind of behind this. In other words, the Guidestone stood as a representation of hey, these people exist. They're in our society and they believe that we need to keep them. It said, maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. That's number one on the Georgia Guidestones. Number two was guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. It's starting to sound familiar, ain't it? Number three, unite humanity with a living new language. Number four, rule, passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. In other words, these globalists or worldly people, whatever you want to call them, they believe you need to keep population down to a certain level. Now, I got wrote here at the bottom of this paper, and I'm going to go through it and just kind of, I'm just going to go ahead and go with it. This might be a short episode because there's, I've tried it over and over and over, and I get rambling on. So, how does population control work? Well, number one, we all know about it: abortion and contraceptives. You know, and and this leads to where I got led down this rabbit hole. How did I find out about all this stuff? Is right here. Infertility. I don't know why infertility stuff keeps popping up on my YouTube feed, <laughs> you know, over the last six months. I keep getting this stuff popping up. But but uh, Candace Owens done a video about infertility. And she talked about the ingredients that was in the food. And she talked about the, she done it in a context of all our food, you know. And the, I don't know if you've heard about the eggs the whole egg deal they had here a while back where 
chickens wouldn't or hens wouldn't lay an eggs and and it turns out everybody's saying that lando lakes i think or something they was all blaming lando lakes feed and all this it was i don't know if it was a conspiracy theory i don't even know i don't have a clue but uh I don't, I don't know the whole story behind all that, but everybody was talking about that and, and they're talking about the infertility of the chickens and then Candace Owens done a video about the women's infertility. And, and what she named in that video was this TBHQ, BHA, and BHT. Yeah, now, from here on, you're going to need to get a pen and paper out and you need to write this down. And old people will say, get you a pencil. These ingredients, the best way I can describe TBHQ, BHA, and BHT is they're a chemical that's in your food that encapsulates your food to keep it from spoiling. It's an antioxidant. It, it keeps your food from coming in contact with the air, or the oxygen, to spoil. And it's in all kind of stuff. Now, what these are are they call these generally recognized as safe ingredients in food all right and it's i'm just going to go through these and talk about them a little bit but the reason i said write them down is because you need to research these on your own because if i tell you that tbhq causes infertility and you're going to go well, you're a crackpot you know i don't know if it does or not and i had never looked that part of it up I know what I've read, it's uh, a whole lot worse than that. I'll say it that way. But uh, I kind of jumped ahead of myself. I'm going to go back. Because before I tell you about all these ingredients, I need to finish how does this population control work. I talked about abortion and infertility. Uh, drugs. You know, getting people on drugs is a good way to keep the population down. That, you know, every one in a while we can't seem to just kick the drugs out of our country because there's people got an interest in keeping drugs in there. You know, fentanyl, we've seen fentanyl. See, we can blame all this on China, but it's important to note that the Chinese, a lot of Chinese companies, including the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, is partners with the World Economic Forum and all this globalist agenda mess. So I don't want to sound like some kind of conspiracy theory, but it don't take a whole lot of looking into it. You go to World Economic Forum's website, just look for yourself. Read their partners list, who's partners with them, and then you, you in other words, you start making circles real quick. Wait a minute, this is bad over here. Oh, they're part of this. Oh, they're partners with them. Oh, you see what I mean? It, like circles real quick. Uh, so drugs, fentanyl, uh, 300 people a day are dying of fentanyl in the United States. And that's uh, the main cause of death. Number one cause of death between ages 18 and 40, I think, or 45. 18 and 45. That's your fighting men and women. Our, our men and women of fighting age. They're killing more people with fentanyl in this country right now than they ever could by dropping soldiers out like it did in Red Dawn, the movie Red Dawn. You could you drop paratroopers in the United States, you wouldn't kill half as many as this fentanyl is killing. You see what I'm saying? So conspiracy theory or not, that's dead on right there. Alcohol. I got real alcohol. There's a reason why every TV station and uh, everywhere you go, they signs up glorifying alcohol use. Okay? It kills people. Accidental death is right on up the list of killing people. Pills, same thing. And then you watch TV. Oh, you, I, that that commercial with that lady with the smiley face on the, you know, she's got a little paper smiley face she's holding up in front of her. If you'll watch that commercial, there's a lot of the stuff she names that they name in that commercial that them pills will do. Is fruits of the spirit right out of the old Bible, right out of the Word of God. You watch it and read. You see what I'm talking about? They literally claim if you take these pills that you'll get the fruits of the spirit. Tell me how demonic that is. Mm. Yeah. And then marijuana. I got wrote marijuana. Marijuana. 
the reason I wrote marijuana, I'm going to go a little rant here with marijuana. I'm just going to go with it. I've talked about this before. If you read your Bible and look up visions or dreams in your Bible, all throughout the Bible, it talks about visions and dreams. A lot of the main things, the prophecies that's in the Bible, it's visions and dreams. Daniel, visions and dreams. Um, which one? Wasn't it Jacob that laid his head on a rock? And had a had a dream, and and he said, "This is this is the place of the Lord, and, and that rock is where he built the temple, where the temple was later built." If I ain't mistaken, I mean, there's visions and dreams all throughout the Bible, and marijuana. One of the main side effects of marijuana is it prevents people from having dreams, and a lot of people don't know that. If you go read the side effects of marijuana, that's it. And that means that marijuana is separating people from the voice of God. Now, if that's the case, is it separating them from the breath of God? If you start separating people away from God, you're separating them away from life. The Holy Spirit gives life. God is the life giver. You see what I mean? So, in my opinion, marijuana is a number one killer. It's a killer. And people don't even realize it, but that boy, that makes a lot of people mad. And they get on, you know, I tell people that and they'll get upset. And if you get upset when well, we, we can disagree on stuff, you know, it'd be all right. But, uh, marijuana, I got on that list. Now I got wrote, convince them. They are the problem. It's climate change. Now, that takes me back up here to AI social media influence. Now I watched a video where a guy took and an, one of them chat bot AIs and programmed it to destroy the world and plugged it up the internet and let it go to see what it would do. And it was writing plans of how to, what it was going to do and calculating and doing, and it was looking up all the different ways to destroy the world. And then you know what it done? Started creating social media accounts and then getting other chat bots to run those social media accounts and give them instructions. And one of the instructions on there was to, it's just horrendous to me that this is even going on and, and I have to explain it. We're living in such horrible times. The instructions it give the AIs, it was telling the AIs to convince humans to make humans allies and how to do that was convince humans that they are the problem. And I thought, wow, you know, it just plain as day there. And I thought, wow. And it said that convince them of climate change and, and that the humans are parasites on the planet and all. And meanwhile, while it's convincing humans that, to do that, the whole plot of the whole thing was to convince them, get them so deep and involved in this that it could use humans as tools. In other words, to convince them, go do this for me, go do that for me, whatever. And I thought, and I, it put me in mind of like the Terminator, Terminator movie, you know, 1984. This was like a just some sci-fi movie, and now here we are living it. And I thought, how many governments are doing this? Is the Chinese government doing this? The North Korean government doing this? Are they setting up social media sites and trying to convince us to kill ourselves? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, we, and I, I wrote brainwashing. Social media brainwashing is what I wrote. And I, I got, and it's important to note that the, a lot of this stuff, when you go to reading and researching this, you're going to find out that these are social, our uh, World Economic Forum partners. It all keeps going back to the World Economic Forum. There's a reason that Glenn Beck and Tucker Carlson and all these conservative senators and preachers and everybody is carrying on about this World Economic Forum. It's, it's not some crazy conspiracy theory. Once you realize that these people, all this leads right back into it. And when you read the, uh, what I'm going to is the poison in food. I've already started on it a little bit. Poison our food. You go, what? Yeah. I've went down a, a, 
a whole I'm I'm going to the grocery store and finding poison in our food. And it's not Christian for me to know about this and not tell you about it. You see what I'm saying? You know, that that's the only only way I you know, and what I've noticed is you pick up the food and you read it and it's got some kind of poisonous ingredient and they call it generally recognized as safe. You know, I said that already. Generally recognized as safe, but then you go to reading what these chemicals do to your body, scientific research studies from universities all over the country, different universities has come up with research on like high fructose corn syrup. You know, I it's I I used to have one on my refrigerator about a university study about what high fructose corn syrup does to you. It's bad. Do not. It's in it pan, pancake syrup, sodas, all this. In other words, if you pick up a food and look at it, and it's got this stuff in it, and then you go to the World Economic Forum Partners web, you know, the website, shows their partners, and you look at that company that you're looking at right there on the food, it's on that list. 99% of the time. High fructose corn syrup has been around a long time. It's highly addictive. It's been blamed for diabetes and obesity and all kind of stuff. That's just normal stuff. But then it, it goes into intestinal cancers and tumors and it, all kind of stuff that through university studies of, of high fructose corn syrup. Now, I mentioned the TBHQ, BHA, and BHT. I'm just going to give them all to you right here. High fructose corn syrup, BHA. BHA, BHT, TBHQ, and then canola, canola oil, and rapeseed oil. Now, rapeseed oil is poisonous. There's no other way of getting around it. How they're putting it in our food is because I don't know. I don't even know how you could possibly put that in food. It's been known to be poisonous for 40 years. And the fact that all of a sudden now it's going in our food the whole deal was they they took rapeseed oil and genetically modified it to make canola oil. So the the whole deal was to try to make a, a cooking oil or, or an oil that could be edible in small amounts. But the reason they had to do that is because rapeseed oil is poisonous. So, yeah, if you go and type in rapeseed oil, canola oil, or TBHQ, BHA, BHT, and high fructose corn syrup, and look at keywords to look for would be like uh, health health problems, uh, university studies, and you go to reading about these, you're going to find out that these are some seriously bad stuff. And fine if if you don't believe me, whatever, and you're like I'm going, you know, that guy's a crackpot. Please don't feed this to your children. Okay? Check your baby food. Check your peanut butter. Check your applesauce. Check the stuff you're feeding your little your little kids. Do not feed this stuff to your children. I'll say that much. And I got wrote down here at the bottom. Grow a garden now. These... This whole deal, I, I hate it that we're living in these times. I hate it that we're living in the last days because that's what this is. And there's no getting around this. You go to the grocery store and you read. I mean, they're even putting wood pulp in our chicken now. Think about that. A friend of mine, well, I'll just say it, my cousin drives a chicken truck. And he, I was talking to him. I said, we need, I was going to see about getting some chicken. You know, usually they get a deal on big cases of chicken. I, like, I had a whole deal. My freezer, I had a whole bunch of, it was off of overage, off of one of them chicken loads, and it was KFC chicken. And, you know, uncooked, frozen KFC chicken. Two big old, I think, 20-pound boxes I had in my freezer. And the whole deal happened with my freezer, and I lost all my food in my freezer. And I was like, I I had that's 40 pounds of chicken, and I was talking to him about get some more chicken. He said, You don't want that chicken. He said, Now, if you get bone in chicken, you might be okay. 
but do do not buy that the the fillets or whatever the processed chicken. He says wood pulp. It ain't nothing but a bunch of sawdust. He said you're getting a bunch of uh, chicken flavored sawdust. You don't you don't want to eat that. I, what? So it's not just this. It's it's a it's there. It's all aspect. In other words, everything you pick up in the grocery store. I'll give you an example. Doing radio or doing a podcast, I was listening to another radio show and they was making fun of a guy for having cough drops. And I was thinking, I keep cough drops. If you do radio, you need you you keep cough drops. It's just something you have. So when you in between clips or whatever, I might. Get my favorite cough drops. Well, my favorite cough drop, everybody's got their own, is now it's got a bunch of chemicals in it. And I, I said, there ain't no way. I'm, no, this ain't. So I got my old bag. I bought it just so I could compare them. And I got my old bag. And sure enough, the old bag that I have didn't have the chemicals in it. And the new bag does. Now, that's true with I can grab my my I don't I'm scared to even say the names of anything. I don't want to give any brand names away. I want you to look it up on your own. But you go in the grocery store and you pick up a bag of your favorite potato chips and look at them and you're gonna go, wait a minute. Uh uh-uh. uh. It's got this canola. So many different potato chip brands have canola on them. They're cooking them potato chips and canola oil. Instead of what used they used to use corn oil, corn oil mixed with cottonseed oil, and then somewhere along the line to save money they went to soybean oil. But well, now they're just canola, oil, and that's that's poisonous. That's all. There ain't no other way of getting around. That's poisonous. No other way of saying it. So now yeah, there's still tater chip brands you can get. You know, I'm saying everything. You, you just got to search and look. But please look into this and. Because if you're like a lot of people right now, getting sick all the time, weak, not feeling good, that's what's going on. You're eating poisonous food. You think about it. You get these these ingredients in your intestines that encapsulates food, it encapsulates your intestines. You see what I'm saying? Now you can your body can absorb nutrients. Yeah, it's it's very bad stuff. And I wanted to do this episode. I've been, I've, I've recorded this episode so many times and the whole, I, I go back and forth and trying to explain it, but, and cause mainly when you get talking about this, people think you're crazy. <laughs> you know, that's all there is to it. But these ingredients they are putting in these food. There is no logical reason to add a chemical like this to your bread or to your cooking oil that adds or to your your popcorn or or whatever or that adds it costs more money to do that why would they do that there's no worldly reason for that i don't understand it i can't you know and then i watched the whole deal with candace owens talking about the infertility and in other words if you put all this together Next thing you know, you're going to have to put on your aluminum foil hat. That's all there is to it. <laughs> but you start reading all this. That's what you feel like. After you read it all and you're like, oh, man, I just need to go ahead and get an aluminum foil hat. I've tried over and over to do this episode. I've deleted it and deleted it. I just recorded the whole episode and deleted it. I actually had an episode completed and saved as a draft and titled and everything and done. And I said, no, and I deleted it. But the reason is, is, is like I said, you're talking about poisonous food and that's hard to pass. You know, you, you can, you can get people to believe in the, you know, the social media influence and the brainwash and everybody knows about that. Everybody knows, already knows that. And everybody knows about fentanyl and everybody knows it's about the war on drugs and all that mess and, and all the, and I think it's one in every five people are taking prescription medication. I think it's the statistic on that. 
and alcohol, I can't, I can't remember, but everybody knows somebody drinks all the time. But when you start telling people that their food they're buying in the grocery store is full of poisonous ingredients, now you really kind of step into something that, that people just don't want to believe. That's just too awful. But that's the truth. I started off with 1 Corinthians 13, love rejoices in the truth. And that's the reason I started off with that is because you need to know about this. And mainly, especially for old people, you take old people that's with sensitive immune systems and young, you know, babies and toddlers, they don't need to be eating this stuff. And you need to, I wrote, grow a garden now. Learn, everybody I talk to will tell me, I'll tell you, I can grow a garden on my best. Look, if you ain't grow, if, if, first step in growing a garden, I'll go ahead and give you the key ingredient. And you're, it's going to blow your mind. Build soil. You cannot grow a garden. You can't just go out there and throw some seeds in the ground and grow a garden. It takes years of building the soil. So you need to hurry up and get started now. If Whatever you can grow in pots or containers with, with potting soil. You know, this is all worldly stuff. It's not really biblical, but, but you need to grow a garden for your own health. And, you know, I'm sure God didn't intend you to just eat a bunch of poison and die. You see what I'm saying? These vegetables are being sprayed. I've read an article where these vegetables are being sprayed with insecticides and Mexico and shipped up here or South America and get shipped up here and people are eating all these insect insecticides and all this stuff. Look, if you're going to live long, you know, it was that Psalm. It says, I shall not die, but live and proclaim the works of the Lord. If that's your plan, don't eat this garbage. That's what I got for y'all. God bless y'all. I thank you for listening. You've been listening to Watchman's Update. Stick it down, stick around for the prayer at the end. I hope I brought it home this time because whew, this has been a tough one. <laughs> God bless y'all. Thank you for listening. All right, I got a new prayer. So y'all lean in. Here we go. I got to do it quick. Dear Lord, I pray for all those who hear this podcast. I pray, Lord, for your healing Holy Spirit to minister to them. Please, Lord, be their, be their comforter and healer. Please, Lord, put a hedge of protection around them. Please, Lord, give them the courage and the strength to trust in you and to do your will. Please, Lord, be their vanguard and their rear guard. Go before them and be the defender behind them. Be the rock they stand on. Please, Lord, give them a renewed heart to chase after you, Lord. Remove the calluses from their heart. Please, Lord, have mercy on them and give them time to turn and repent. Please, Lord, be patient with them. Please, Lord, forgive their sins, Lord, and give them a new start. Thank you, Lord. In Christ Jesus' name, Yeshua Messiah's name, thank you, Lord. Amen.